Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, January 27th, and this is Morning Market Movers, where we look at hot spots in the markets for the day, and we do some live analysis for day trading. I'm Todd Rich with Nadex. With me, Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple. Uh, we do have some things to talk about today. We've got, you know, following the Fed's announcement, which we were expecting that they're going to start raising interest rates in March, uh, that indication, and they're doing one last uh, purchase of assets. Uh, and after that, they are no longer going to be purchasing assets. Then the question is, how do they take those off of their balance sheet? Do they let those assets just run out and come off the balance sheet? Do they Are they ever going to sell them? I think the door is open on that still a bit. What have we seen? We've seen dollar strength, and we're going to take a peek at, at the dollar. I mean, of course, if the dollar, if the U.S. is going to start raising interest rates, you would expect to see dollar strength. Raising interest rate environment. We're seeing gold and silver get hammered, right? I mean, uh, they're not uh, they're not performing assets in that they you don't generate returns from gold and silver. Uh, so uh, when the U.S. as as you start to raise rates, it's going to make those assets look a little less attractive. And of course, we're also going to talk about equities. We're in the middle of earnings season, and we've had some. You know, some companies are doing well, some are struggling a little bit. Uh, and we, you know, McDonald's, for instance, came out this morning, missed a little bit. Uh, so McDonald's a little weaker on, and uh, that's going to affect indices a little differently. We do have Apple earnings after the close today. That's definitely going to be something that could potentially impact the NASDAQ index. All right, before we jump into all the analysis, I do need to share this disclaimer that trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for everyone, that any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. And this is an educational session. Please do not construe anything Brian or I say as a buy or sell recommendation. We are doing this for your education purposes. We are going to start off over at the dollar. Uh, you could see, and this is the dollar yen, and you could see the dollar just absolutely took off yesterday. Just Woos, to the moon. Uh, you're seeing a similar move. Here's the euro US dollar. Uh, but the uh, of course, the US dollars in the second position here, straight to the floor, just just cratered. So uh, things that we would expect to see. Uh, Brian, I'm actually going to flip it over to you and you could take us through some of the movement in, in the dollar because that's definitely something that's that's been in play. And then I think that is distinctly impacted gold and silver. We'll jump over there before we finish up with equities. Sure. Yeah, a lot has happened in the last 24 hours, obviously. Um, a lot of we telegraphed from yesterday, and we talked about you know what was coming. And again, there's a lot of different stories out there uh, in the last 24 hours, and it'll be interesting to see how they play out today. You know, Lately, we've been talking about currencies have been flat. Obviously, right now, if you look at the 24-hour pip change in all the currencies, euro dollar down 133, pound dollar down 143, dollar yen up 113, dollar Swiss 109, which is over double the ATR. Dollar cat up 116, the Aussie dollar down 107. Um, told you guys, year 2022 would be the year of the currencies as everybody starts raising. This is exactly what we're talking about. And they didn't even raise. They just said that, yep, we're raising in March. Um, you know, uh, yesterday, one of the things we said, it, it doesn't matter if they raise it or they, tele or they telegraph when the raise is coming, the market has to adjust. And this is the market adjustment. Um, you know, stack on top of that, we have advanced GDP numbers coming in, not only an adjustment from previous, but then they blew the numbers out. So yeah. it, it, it's one of those things. A lot of times when you see the previous adjusted upwards, it tends the actual tends to be less because, again, the forecast is right. But when you make the adjustment, the actual percentage is different. Not only did they adjust higher on the GDP, but then they also the actual came in even higher than the forecast. So it was kind of like a double double. Durable goods are down a little bit, but overall, you know, again, that's money, you know, as soon as you take transportation out, it, it's dead flat. And transportation is really going to be the name of the game. Actually, McDonald's, you mentioned McDonald's miss. Um, what was interesting about McDonald's, the reason why they said they miss is because inflation due to transportation. Very interesting. The reason why they're doing well, though, is because of the digital digitalization of McDonald's. And if you don't know what that is, McDonald's is an app now. You get There's a rewards program. You get free stuff. If you buy everything on the app, pull in, they literally bring it out to you. So remember we talked about automation and removing people from the, the chain? That's or exactly what they've done. Now. Yeah, more efficient, uh, mm -hmm. easier to track. You could they, That rewards program is actually very clever too, I have to mm -hmm. tell you. 
they said 25% of their business now is being done through the app. So, you know, within such, within one year, actually, I guess it started that this article says July. Uh, and again, after your first order, you get free McChickens, free vanilla shakes, free hash browns. I mean, who doesn't like hash browns? And, and then you guys, and then you get, you know, codes all the time for things. But again, remember, it used to be you walk into a store, which again, nobody wants to walk in anymore. You got to talk to a person. Hopefully they don't screw your order up. And then they put the ordering window in there. And again, that increased, you know, the, the popularity of it. Now you don't even need to go inside and you don't have to wait in that long drive through menu. You're literally on the way, you hit it on your phone and boom, they bring it right out. That's even faster. But what it does is it's eliminating people from that chain. So we said, this is the way that it's going. Um, it's going that way. So it, it'll be interesting to hear what Apple has to say later on today, because this is right in Apple's wheelhouse, you know, smartphones, iPhones drive those numbers. Um, they've had some kind of hiccups left and right. So but anyway, from yesterday, FOMC was obviously the big news. Uh, and any time that we see any of the current, uh, any of the countries raising, we should see uh, basically the equivalent response. And it's been straight up dollar today. Um, I mean, there's what the dollar looks like. Uh, you guys may wonder, well, what is this? That that's that, that's FOMC. And isn't that funny how they said they're going to raise it and immediately drop down? Um, and what's funny about this is that just happens to be a four-hour level on the dollar. You know, we talk about four-hour levels. Raising interest rates is a big deal, but it literally everybody that saw that said you're raising it and hit the buy button. Guess what happens? They've lost a, they lost a lot of their accounts yesterday. If they were trying to play against the dollar, um, very very common. You know, again, it's an easy way to wash out people that are reacting afterwards. But look at this: get it cheap and then and then take off. So any of the currencies look the same. Um, you know, Aussie dollar basically straight down. Uh, Euro dollar again straight down. Uh, here's where the news came in from yesterday. Um, a little bit of a pop and then just, just closed. I mean, it, it's very, very telegraphed. Um, you know, the only thing that would have made this difficult, again, right here, you can see it. It, it, it literally we talked about this yesterday, too. You can see that it pulled back up right into the FIB level. Um, right around that 50% is where those, those those sellers were in. Again, it's a level we need to mark off for next time also, which is approximately around 135.12. So again, keep that on there. Uh, we are approaching a level just a little bit lower. It's a nice little pop off of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we have some profit taking coming in. Um, remember, at this point, the news came out yesterday, right? Yesterday afternoon. Now, every every session, if we open the session, the U.S. session now, every session has now gotten to react to the dollar getting stronger. Now, rising interest rates is not your typical kind of parabolic move. It is a fundamental change in the way that things are being done. But remember. They haven't raised it yet. It's just that it's coming. So again, the dollar is preparing. What I mean by that and why that's important is because the equities are all up. The equities have not crashed yet because they still have another month, two months of this type of environment. They know it's there, but they still have two months of earning power and all this with low, cheap lending, and there's a lot of time to do things. It's not officially here yet. But again, you're going to see it in, the, in, in things like the dollar. And again, there's some reversals available. Uh, but things like gold and silver. So... I want to talk about gold. Um, remember, gold is a hedge for inflation. Okay, it's kind of like a seatbelt. You don't if you put your seatbelt on after you get in a car accident, it doesn't do anything. Okay, hedging is what you do beforehand. It's it's for protection. Everybody out there that's talking now about man, it's a great time to get gold to rising interest rates. Has no idea what they're talking about. You rise interest. You you know you want to get in a when in, you're in an environment of raising inflation or rising inflation. That's when you get into gold to maintain your buying power. Now that they're crushing inflation, you can see that they're also crushing gold. And we're literally back at 1800 again, right? We were at 1850 yesterday. Uh, actually, we touched into 1854. And now we're breaking through 1800 again to the downside. Silver looks even worse. Silver is down 2.6%. Now you can see right here is where it pulled back up again. We talked about that one level. And again, 24 was kind of the linchpin for this one. Very, very easy zone. You can see that there was the tops right in here. Again, touched it here, touched it here, touched it here. 24 was the backstop on it. There's FOMC. Did they do anything? Nope. But are we going to? Yup. And then boom, crash it all the way back down from really, what is it? 2398. And now we're all the way down into 2389. So yeah. over a dollar to the downside just from that yeah. time frame. So 23. And, and, Say right now, silver's target is a little bit lower. There's definitely some buyers coming in at 2278, but 2266 is kind of where my downward target is. And you know, will it hold there? There's not really a lot, you know, a lot of a reason to hold it. Um, you know, all the people that are using this as a hedge for inflation, guess what? I mean, it's 
it's just not there again. They're 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 in the pro the active process of crushing inflation. So uh, I would say this is still probably to the downside. Natural gas is pulling back a little bit, um, but I think equities are the important ones to talk about. That all the equities technically right now are in the green and kind of rallying back. And there was, you know, this is where FOMC came in. There was a drop down, but was it an absolute collapse? No. But again, knowing that it's coming is a big deal. And all we did was we see we we saw it come down and now it's starting to rally back again. You know, the VIX is down five point eight percent. Now that FOMC is out, they can remove that unknown volatility from the markets. Right. Uh, really, the only volatility exists right now is Russia. And again, it's sitting down here. Um, you know, Russia, you know, considers war with Ukraine is unthinkable, right? And it's great because in the ever bipolar this of Russia, uh, it literally goes back and forth, right? Russia considers war with the Ukraine is unthinkable. So that means that you don't need 100,000 troops at the border. That's yeah, surely uh, for your protection. It's unthinkable that, what, that, that, that people are going to resist if you invade them. I'm not sure what he means. Yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and every headline is different. You know, uh, the one I got earlier today was that, you know, basically NATO has said, we're not changing our stance whatsoever. And Russia said that, you know, this is, you know, th th what they sent back to us was really, they didn't listen to any of our demands. And now we have to, you know, there, there needs to be a serious conversation. Again, when both sides are sending troops to the border, I'm not sure why that's not a serious discussion. But that's really the last little major kind of thing out there that we don't know about. I mean, we know Omicron exists. We know that everybody is, you know, basically going to get Omicron at this point. Um, we know that everybody is downgrading from a pandemic back to an endemic. Uh, yeah. Everybody is now convinced that it's going to be just like the flu, so we can remove that. We know inflation is going crazy. We know that advanced GDP, we're back. I mean, 6.9 is a huge figure, especially a double-double like this. Um, this is showing that the economy is rolling pretty well, right? And, uh, and you know, cons Consumer confidence <laughs> isn't as high as expected, but right now there's absolutely no reason not to raise it. The longer they wait, and again, March is wonderful, but that's another month and a half from now. We're going to see a bit more inflation come through as well, and it's only going to hurt people even more. So this inaction, eventually, they're, they're paying the price for it now. Um, yeah. I mean, when, when everybody's saying inflation is hurting us, inflation is hurting us, um, this is a big year for politics. Every single one of these companies that is able to go back and say that, yeah, our profits were down because inflation is just getting – it's way too out of hand. It's all going to come back to bite them. Just between boosters and and the language out there, everybody's going to know that inflation has been such a big deal. And um, you know, it's the little guys that are going to hurt the most. So we're the inflation story is not done. We're going to heal a lot more. But as far uh, and, and as today goes, guys, stop either. I mean, no, you, you, until you, until it actually raises. Well, until they actually, well, until they get until they get the interest rates up to a level where it starts to change the scales, and mm -hmm. they're not indicating that they're going to shock. I mean, I know there's some people. I know you and I have debated this. Uh, the Fed likes to broadcast it. Uh, I personally think, you know, 50 basis points in March might be the good way to kick it off um, mm -hmm. uh, instead of the, you know, it's like it's, you know, I, I'm not a fan of ripping off the Band-Aid and just toppling over the apple cart and saying, all right, you guys clean up this mess. Uh, that, that's mm -hmm. that's not rational either. But to, to do yeah, it I mean, so at your highs. it hurts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at 40 year highs and, and, you know, one year into the presidency with some of the lowest approval ratings we've ever seen, particularly for the economy, not good. So, not good. Yeah. So, so, and that's, and that's where politics is getting involved in it again. So, I, at this point, I mean, it's going to be very, very interesting. You know, like I said, they're, they've been complaining, 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 inflation, 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 inflation. So, I don't know. I would say, though, today, guys, you know, look for these, you know, look for pullbacks. You know, we're seeing, you know, price drive up again. Uh, for the most part, I mean, yeah. I mean, rising interest rates is not going to be good, but it's something that's needed. The economy is obviously firing on all cylinders. This number, it's green. That's obviously great for interest rates. But again, what it's showing me right now is, yeah, the economy looks great. We know they're going to raise interest rates. That's that's starting to get baked into the market. But we got two months, so we got you know happy days for two months. And, and, I would and look even for pullbacks. Then, if they oh, they do twenty five basis points, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. twenty five basis points. It's nothing. Even if yeah. they did a triple, you know, or a, two, 50 basis points, a half a percent, mm -hmm. it's, it's start, you start getting there. But historically speaking, we are at all time low ever mm -hmm. interest rates. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, I think at this point, everybody's used to, everybody likes the free money. I don't think we're ever getting back to, but the historical average is yeah, right. we're not going to go back to 13 percent or no you i don't know, i don't I mean, think we get up to five or six i think at this point uh, everybody has mentioned now that they think the low rate environment is what the new norm is going to be and that um, could be and but we could yeah. we could come off of zero and if we went to two or three percent i get it yeah, yeah. i'm thinking it's, two it's or three is probably where it's going to be 
and mm-hmm. something, but these first raises to go from zero to 0.25, even from 0.25 to, you know, 0.5 or 0.75, it's still yep. free. <laughs> I mean, it's basically it, it, yeah, it, in the it grand is. scheme of things. I mean, I think yep. about they let someone like me borrow for my mortgage 30 years at two and five eighths. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. It's, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's, yeah. you know, to me, that's free money and that's two and five eighths. You know, mm-hmm. we're still for the banks and everything and they're still down at zero. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, but that's, I mean, and again, it's not an environment that has worked either, right? Japan has basically had zero negative interest rates for what, almost 30 years now. Right. And they and still it, are considered changed. Yeah. And nothing changed whatsoever. So, uh, you know, you, you're going to pay for it on the front end of the back end. So um, I want to get everybody rolling along here. Guys, this is NQ from yesterday. I think NQ will be particularly interesting to watch today. Um, you guys will see we marked off this 15, uh, 536 yesterday. You can see right there that candle. Uh, this was the perfect setup yesterday when I talked about, hey, listen, expect the market to get across from FOMC. We literally pulled right back up to that level. And there was a little bit of a spike through the top, which, again, Using Nadex, this would not have been an issue for you because, uh, again, we have the upside protection. That's a lot of movement very, very fast, and that was expected, but it also gave us a race track. So let's say look for uh, NQ to be able to kind of rally back up today to 14, 536. Probably, you know, pretty decent. And, and Tesla right now is – it's showing up from where it was. It's kind of mixed. You know, it, it was a little choppy back and forth, but, you know, Tesla is showing to, you know, be up a little bit. And then, again, Apple is already starting to move. And again, the earnings coming later on today, but Apple is also going to open up higher. So having those two in the move in the positive direction is definitely something that can help NQ drive. And like I said, a lot of people try to get into Apple you know, early on, on earnings days. Um, you know, I think that's going to be a driving force today. But you know, I wouldn't really try to flip this or turn it at least until that time. And even then, I'd like to see a new top put in before I try to you know, get any profit taking in NQ. But I think NQ is the one to watch today. Um, as you can see, it's up the most right now. And I think that, know, would, that probably continues through today. And I want to mention, you know, Apple earnings coming out after the close. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and if someone were trading Apple or looking at the NASDAQ after the equity markets close, just tread lightly because some of those reactions after hours can be odd. You know, Microsoft earnings, mm-hmm. uh, they blew out revenue. They blew out profits. They, everything was great. And after hours, they pounded Microsoft into the sand and, you know, well, uh, so they crushed. opened the stock the next day and it was $25 yeah. higher. So yeah. everyone was panic selling after some fantastic news yeah. got absolutely decimated. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that the liquidity after hours, when it disappears, you get some strange trading behavior. So yep. just tread like your options guy, you know, all about the volatility crush strategies and Apple is one of those ones that is stacked with, with volatility going into oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah. Well, Cause one, it's before, before the number comes out, fear concerns, the unknown, the unknown volatility right. goes up. As soon as, as soon as that is a, a known commodity, you see, yep. and that's what we saw in the VIX yep. yesterday after the Fed announced. Um, you know, once we got the news, now it's known. All right, we now we know. We heard, we got the story, uh, and you can and you can adjust and accommodate accordingly. Mm-hmm. All right, um, do we have? I, I think uh, I think that's probably going to cover it for today. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, like I said, it, it, overall, I think positive day today. Um, you know, even with the dollar rising right now, the data today is just so good, showing us the. I mean, you know, you think about a seven percent GDP on yeah. a quarterly basis. Supposedly, you know, five years ago, that was impossible. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. And now we're throwing up sevens, even a year into a pandemic. And it is some of this is pandemic recovery, but it shows that again, everything is working the way that it should right now. So. Uh, so perfect with that. Any questions for Nadex, please email us customer service at nadex.com. Brian is also accessible, support at keeptradingsimple.com. You've got my email up there. Uh, you're on YouTube right now. Actually, you could be on Facebook, just so you're aware. The recordings from the boot camp on trading the stock market. If you wanted to catch some of those recordings, they're available on the Nadex YouTube channel. We did put them up last night. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, just a recap for today. Uh, dollar strength. We're seeing dollar strength. Of course, you uh, the Fed raising interest rates. We saw that, uh, and it's uh, creating volatility in the U.S. dollar. Gold and silver both getting hammered with that. 
listen, you got to store gold and silver. You're going to have to pay interest to do that. Uh, whatever it is, they're not. You can put it under your bed. Just tell me your address first. That's- yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, gold and silver weaker. Equities all looking to open in the green this morning, uh, just sort of stabilizing after a bit of a crazy week. Uh, poor PCE price right- tomorrow morning, guys. Yeah, we did. Been- so, oh, uh, oh, tomorrow morning we've got core PCE price index month oh. over month, 8 30 oh, yeah, tomorrow yeah, morning. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, gauge of inflation. So, uh, yeah, guess what? We're having inflation. <laughs> we have inflation. <laughs> Just if you guys didn't know, <laughs> transitory. transitory. <laughs> I don't know one uses that word anymore. <laughs> With that, <laughs> that was, that was so 2021. <laughs> I love it. With that, Brian and I will catch you again tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and good luck in the markets.